Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. Hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar for JFT Brokers exclusively, the three columns of profitable trading. Um, first of all, the question, is everything fine with uh, the audio? Should be, so um, I don't have uh, any trouble here at my end, um, but nevertheless, it would be nice if you could... Uh, just let me know whether everything's fine or not. Just type in the short yes or, or everything fine or whatever in the chat box. Um, perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um, so then, yeah, let's, let's um, start right here. Uh, let's start right here with this, with this um, very interesting topic. So, um, in fact, um, I think that, that, yeah, trading, profitable trading is uh, based on three columns. And it's not just three columns you can uh, you can uh, watch at independently from each other or consider them to be independent from each other. But in fact, they all interact heavily with each other. And um, so uh, I think, based on my personal opinion, that's definitely true, that if one column is missing, you have definitely big, big trouble to be profitable in your, in your, overall, trade, in your overall trading. And that's exactly what we want to have a look at. Um, today, so um, what we what we right now will do is first of all we'll start with uh, some thoughts on the so-called toughest game in the world. So these are not my thoughts here, my lines, um, but it's uh, definitely worth to 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 have a look at them since I I think it's it perfectly sums up what uh, trading is about, what your opponents are, who you're playing against, or who you're trading against if you want and um, why it's so important to not just know the columns of profitable trading, but it's also very important to know why it's so uh, important to have a clear defined, well-defined game plan. Um, so uh, that's one information, especially those getting started with trading now, so beginners who listen to this right now, um, that trading is the toughest game in the world. So there have been plenty of, of coachings I've been through um, over the years and um, there were very, very successful people coming to me saying, hey, I um, made a lot of money by, well, I don't know, um, building up a, um, um, a company or something, so entrepreneurs um, coming to me and saying, well, I want to, uh, to, to um, calm down a little and uh, in the next years now after um, being on fire and uh, under stress all the all the time I, I just think that probably trading and uh, working a more relaxed and balanced life is uh, something um, which which I want to uh, yeah, consider and uh, I thought that probably trading is the right thing for me and um, it's very tough for someone like me, even though I have plenty of experience, and even though I'm I'm managing clients' money, so so I'm I'm, I'm trading a bigger account. And um, um, if you combine all this, you can follow my 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 thoughts every day. So um, it's usually that uh, people who book a coaching here with me, they usually say, "Hey, I've seen you in the morning meeting. I love what you had to say about the markets. You have a clear structure. There is uh, depth." in it um, what you what you have to say and um, so that's one of the reasons why I want you to be my mentor and um, then you say okay great um, that's that's awesome I, I love I love this feedback and um, then you start to, uh, to 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 work with these guys and what you just find out is that it's very very difficult to make sure that these guys understand Highly, again, highly successful entrepreneurs, people who build businesses, who probably make millions, and who um, who who were responsible for sometimes hundreds of people. So uh, um, top managers, all these people coming into trading, and then you're sitting there with um, with all your experience around trading, and you try to explain to them, well, guy, um, listen to me. Uh, it might have been hard what you've been through over the years and there have been times when uh, it, it was really hard to, to keep on going um, since uh, we're definitely not talking about small sums you were, you were um, working with during your time as an entrepreneur. But believe me, that was peanuts compared to what trading is about. 
Well, you just can't tell them that. If, if you do, you definitely face a storm of, of like, well, what do you think who you are? And I think, well, the thing is, I can completely understand this since uh, this is usually what, what no one wants to, wants to be told. No one wants to be told that it's difficult to buy low and sell high, okay? So, uh, but in fact, trading is way more than that, than just buying low and selling high. And it's, it's in fact, it's, it has nothing to do um, with, 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 with buying or selling at all, but it's, most of the time, it's a, it's a mental gain. And, uh, um, and, and people who do not accept this, they, well, mo most of the time, they, they just fail. They just fail in being profitable in their trading. So uh, people who, and this is very interesting, in fact, so it's, it's a tough game, but it's nevertheless manageable. So people who are very creative usually have trouble trading profitably, um, while people who are following a strict game plan, like saying a, a pilot or something, um, you have a clear plan and, and you walk through this plan and this makes it more, um, 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 more likely that you're, that you're profitable in your trading. And uh, that's one of the reasons why trading is one of the toughest games in the world since usually we have a tendency in us to say, well, I don't like it to, to be told that uh, there's, um, there's someone out there who's probably better than me. And you're confronted with those who are better than you every day. So the opponents you're, you're facing are some of the sharpest, smartest, most intelligent, well-informed, most irrational, and also quite often most unethical minds in the world. That's who you face in the financial markets. And um, the thing is that usually it's always that there is someone out there who's better than you. And if you're a highly successful entrepreneur who, as I already said, managed people, hundreds of people, make millions of euros um, and all this, well, you probably have trouble to accept this. But in trading, this is something you face every day and you have to accept it. So, and you're playing every day against computer, uh, computers which are faster than you, faster than you can blink with an eye, okay? So high frequency trading, that's nothing, nothing new, so everyone knows about this right now. You're playing against traders who have way more experience than you have. Well, let's, let's face it, I mean, um, I, I have 10 years of experience, 10 plus years of trading the markets. Um, and the thing is, I definitely bet someone coming to trading and a complete Com complete newbie, I, he has no chance against me. But I invite him to play against me. Why? Well, I know that his money will come to me since I am way more experienced and, and I have a game plan I follow. And, and, and that's something where, where you can say, well, this is, this is something which definitely matters when it comes to trading. Now imagine this. So a highly successful entrepreneur, so at the beginning of 50, 55 or something, and then I'm sitting there with 32, 33 years. And I'm telling him how I think the world works. Well, the trading world works the way, well, it works, it, it, it works nearly the way I think it works. So it works for me that way. But all in all, there are several rules I follow and those, follows, uh, the, those rules are, they are true. And, and you just can't um, say, well, they're, they're, they don't play a role for me. So like, there, there's a perfect example of this. Um, I, I had a coaching with someone of these guys and then and, and he was like I, we were coming to to trading psychology in this case and, and behavioral economics behavioral finance um and the so-called loss aversion i'm there there are several webinars in the series those special webinars and behavioral economics behavioral finance and loss aversion has been already a topic so if you want you can easily google or, or youtube search via youtube uh, be the the webinar about uh, behavioral finance and the great thing about this was that I said, well, this is human, and everyone has this. I have this myself, so it's, it's nothing, uh, nothing um, um, unusual. But uh, the thing is, you, you have to find ways how to cope with this. And the great thing was you said, no, I don't have it. If I have a game plan I can follow, well, I don't have loss of version. I said, well, you have loss of version. And he didn't believe me. He just didn't. It, it was just like, no. No, I don't have loss aversion. You have loss aversion. I played a game with him. I'm also, also playing here um, in this webinar, Behavioral Finance. He was less like, no, that's not true. I don't have loss aversion. Well, we just played the game. You just showed that you have loss aversion. No, I don't have loss aversion. And, and then just, just, just uh, think how difficult it becomes for someone with, I think, well, he is not where he is 
um, or he did not come to the uh, come out on, on top of, of, of a lot of other people uh, and and uh, and on top of his uh, um, uh, field of experience um, if he wasn't the way he was and if he did believe in himself but the thing is um, well, in trading, this is something which will definitely hinder you to become more and to become profitable. So this is definitely something you have to consider. And it's, it's unbelievably difficult. And some people have to, to definitely understand it's not just the toughest game, but to believe all those things I'm just summing up here. Um, so you're playing against funds who have more money than you have. Well, this is something you pr probably can understand, but you don't see what those guys can do with you and your positions, especially in illiquid markets. Look at um, Ethereum, for example, what happened yesterday, the flash crash. Have you seen this? Well, this is how this happens if someone is uh, selling uh, with probably more information um, and uh, way more money than you have. Well, you can't anything do against this. You can prepare by, by having an adequate risk and money management plan, but even then, you're, you're definitely not prepared to probably face a loss, which, which will hurt. Um, and uh, you're also trading against your broker. So today's webinar, the special webinar, I'm holding for def, uh, for JFD brokers. JFD brokers is my um, is my my, um, uh, my my first choice. Uh, it's it's the broker I'm trading my managed account about. So um, the broker who um, I, whom I choose to be uh, my exclusive partner. And um, now you may wonder why why JFD brokers? Well. It's, uh, it's a fact that there are several brokers out there who, um, who are trading against their clients. So um, JFD is fair, is transparent, has a 100% STP DMA art execution model. Um, JFD has no market making license at all, so they are not allowed to trade against you, but they have to um, act as, as a 100% intermediary. Uh, so standing in the middle of you, the client, the trader, and the liquidity provides on the other hand. It's not just true in FX, but it's also true in the CFDs. For example, if you're trading Bitcoins um, with JFD, you're, you're not trading against JFD, but you're trading um, uh, with JFD and you're looking for liquidity, uh, which JFD gets from external parties, several external parties. And um, this is something which is completely different to many other brokers out there who, um, in fact, the majority has a market making license and is allowed to trade against you. So it's, they are profiting from your profits, but uh, they, are, they are profiting from your losses that way around. So um, meaning it's not just that you're probably trading against other traders who have more money than you, more information than you have, who have more experience and computers who are faster than you, but it's also broker who is uh, interested in you losing, your, uh, losing money. So they are offering you um, a door or they are offering you a bridge to the world of the financial markets and say, hey, you can trade here with a leverage of 400 to 1 and just leverage your positions as high as possible. And the great thing here is um, they are not offering it to you because they, they hope that you're profitable, but they are offering it to you because, well, if you lose, they win. Um, and they are after your money in your account. It's not that they will cheat you out on this, but they will trade against you. And it will be a fair bet, well, in some terms, since uh, if you sign a contract in which you allow the trader, uh, the, the broker in this case, to trade against you, well, well, well you have no chance, okay? They're, then you just signed the contract. It's pure greed that you say, hey, they, I'm probably better than the broker. And, well, just imagine you're, you're playing a poker game here, turning your cards face off. Uh, face off. So, so you, you have to show which hand you have and then you try to play poker against someone. Well, he can easily fold once he knows that he is beaten against you. Um, while he can definitely keep on, 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 on playing the moment he knows that he's ahead of you and he will always make money. That's a poker game we're playing here. So this is what happens if you're trading against your broker who knows where your stops are and who knows where your take profit level is. Uh, this is an information which you definitely don't want the broker or the, the counterpart in this case to have. In case of JFD, well, you place your stop and you place your limit on a server um, which is uh, a JFD server, but the, 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 the counterpart, the liquidity provider, does not see your stop and your limit here as long as, it, as this level is not hit which means the other side, the liquidity provider does not know, it's purely, it's 100% anonymous. So, um, and this is something which is definitely worth considering here. 
And um, then you're also playing against yourself. You may ha not have seen it yet, but you're definitely playing against yourself. How many times have you said, uh, um, did, you, did you sit in, in front of your screen and you're thinking, well, uh, just let me take the win here. Um, I, let, let, me, let me just pocket this win. I just want to, to uh, feel great about it. I want to hear the cash register ring. Um, while you definitely know it's, it's against your trading rules you probably live by and you're cutting your, your winners short here. Um, how many times have you sat in front of your screen and just took out the stop since you said, well, I can't afford this. It's a too big position. And as long as it's not realized, it's not, a, it's not a, a real loss, but it's a floating loss. And that's something which is purely hypothetical since the market can turn around rather sooner than later. How many times has it been the case? So, and this is exactly something um, when, 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 where what's meant by saying you're, you're trading against yourself, you're trading against your inner voice, which is trying to manipulate, manipulate you. So the question is, do you have a game plan? And do you know on which columns profitable trading is built on? If not, well, then the only thing I can say here is good luck, since you, you're definitely facing some big, big headwinds. And uh, there, there will be lots of trouble in... Uh, yeah, which will face once you you'll trade the markets and, and you can't avoid them since it's just, uh, yeah, it's the toughest game in the world. And um, I can tell you the following, it's, a, it's an honest game. So it's, it means what someone wins will someone else lose. So if you lost money, um, you probably made the right decision in terms of your game plan, but you lost money because you were wrong. And there's no one out there then uh, tapping you on the back and saying, well, no worries if you were wrong. Aww still okay uh, and no it's just it's just the way it is you know you you get well you get rid of your money you're you, you lost and that's it um, on the other hand you take you can take credit for all the win for, for all the winners you you probably made and this is the great thing about trading on the other hand because it feels really great if you if you just won on a trade and you know well I, I traded through and yeah I, I traded I traded my game plan my trading plan and it worked out well it just feels good. It shouldn't be that emotional um, in, in general. So emotion shouldn't play such an um, um, uh, important role here. But it's something you just can't avoid. And by the way, emotions in trading are not just natural, but there are some emotions which, uh, which you can use to increase your profitability while knowing about emotions which are negative and negatively impacting your trading. Well, you just can try to cut them out and, and become more profitable uh, on the, on the, on the uh, other side too. So here are the three columns of profitable trading. So obviously risk and money management, obviously trading psychology, and also a strategy with an advantage. So trading a strategy with an advantage. All these are the columns of profitable trading. And as you may know and heard already from me, all those three columns, they interact with each other. So risk and money management interacts with trading with an advantage. Trading psychology interacts with trading with an advantage. Trading psychology obviously interacts with risk and money management. So uh, in this case, um, all, uh, you, you, you just have to understand all those three. And you have to be an expert on every column. And you have to understand how these columns interact with each other if you really want to become profitable in your trading. So, and this is exactly that. Is one column missing? Well, although these columns seem to stand there independently, they interact, interact really strong with each other. So if a trader fails to succeed in one area or does master it in detail, the chances of being profitable in trading are close to zero. Um, so let's have a look here at some examples to, to give you an understanding, a better understanding of what I'm talking about here. So let's look at risk and money management and trading psychology. I think the most obvious one. So working, respectively, trading with an adequate position size here has consequences on the mental stability. Um, so in case here, that makes perfect sense since the position size, which is far too big, will lead to a behavior of fast profit taking and letting losers uh, or letting losing trades run what do you mean by that let's imagine you're having a i don't know um nine to five job a simple nine to five job and you're making let's say net so uh, you're getting a salary of three thousand euros um now imagine from somewhere um someone gives you money and you you have a trading account of five hundred thousand euros and you may have somewhere read that it's definitely somehow making sense to risk, let's say, 1% maximum on a trade. So meaning 1% of 500 grand is 5,000 euros. 
So now imagine that you're saying, hey, I want to trade the market open in the US markets or I want to trade the market open um, in the European markets, in this case, probably the DAX or something, and we use a strategy called open range breakout. Simple strategy, um, it works, you adapt it so that it works for you and it perfectly fits your, your personal traits um, um, uh, or personal character. And um, so it's a, it's a short-term strategy. So you're building a position, you're risking 5,000 euros or 1% of your trading equity. Um, and let's say, well, look at this example here. So take this one. This is a setup I just formulated for the S&P. It's the open range breakout setup. So you can um, shortly have a look here. Uh, wow, this is really huge, Euro Canadian dollar. I was unfortunately stopped out yesterday. Um, here and the retail says today they were they came in um, above expectation and now you see this big red candle showing that there's definitely some further potential especially if we drop below 47 here uh, yeah and the unfortunate thing thing by the way <laughs> here in this trade was that um, I mean I made a profit on that that's something I want to emphasize here and it was a it was a fine a nice profit so the payoff of this trade was three one so I made nearly two percent two and a half percent really on on, on this trade but um, even though I, I always emphasize that I'd really love to see um, st of st still being positioned over the retail sales since I somehow feel that they come in better than expected and this could push Euro Canadian or a Canadian dollar up and probably Euro down then. Well, and now, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a little unfortunate, but let's come to this example here. So the S&P example, oh, that's great. Yeah, in fact, great. Hmm. In fact, it's great since the setup didn't work out. So obviously it's a short setup. I'm going entry short for 29.5. The good thing about this is you weren't triggered. So um, the setup itself is now uh, not not um, not not active anymore since we obviously 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 made new daily highs while we weren't triggered on the short side too. So there's no trade at all today. But let's imagine that we were triggered somewhere here, and then the market turns around. So you're triggered here at. At, um, uh, in this case, 4:30, it's 2:30 p.m. GMT. You're triggered on the short side. You risk five and a half points, meaning that you're um, with a trading account of 500,000. You're somehow risking um, 1,000 euros per point here. So you adapt the position size that you're risking 1,000 uh, euros, U.S. dollar, GBP, whatever, uh, per point. So. And then you see the market here turn around. You were triggered and it turns immediately around. So here you trigger there, market moves up two points. You're, you're um, um, behind two grand. Two grand. I just said that you have a job, nine to five, and you're making 3,000 euros a day, a month. And then you're losing here in less than five minutes, or probably it's five minutes, something like this. You're losing five minutes, 2,000 euros. So two thirds of your usual monthly salary. You're working 160 hours, so 40 hours um, a week. This is four weeks a month. This is 160 hours. You're working for this to make 3,000 euros net at the end of the month. And then you're losing two-thirds of this in five minutes. And in fact, here, you're losing another two and plus another, uh, yeah, another two, is it? Yeah, it's another two, another two and a half here uh, in the next five minutes. And then you're getting stopped out here. Well, probably you're getting stopped out. Probably you take out the stop since you say, well, I can't afford this. I just lost nearly uh, one month of salary and more than nearly twice of that. Um, in, in in 50 minutes, that's uh, oh my gosh! I mean, I'm sorry, uh, I can't afford this. And you just take out the stop since, or you probably didn't even place the stop since you just do not know when the setup is not is not um, uh, is not uh, valid anymore. So you just lost nearly twice as much in 15 minutes than you usually make by working 160 hours a month. Um, since you just have 500,000 euros in your trading account and since you say, well, I read about the rule of thumb which says don't risk more than 1% in one position here. Um, will you will you face this loss? How, how will you feel after this? How will you feel? I bet you will feel devastated. It's just like as, as, as it's the end of the world for you. Um, even though you might say, well, I still have 495,000 here. I mean, I'm still fine. Yeah, nevertheless, you will keep on trading. You will try to make it somehow back because at the end of the day, when you're sitting together with your family uh, and having having dinner, uh, well, you just can't tell them that you just lost twice your, your monthly salary in 15 minutes. 
And now you start to somehow find other spots here and say, well, it's extended on the upside. Let's trade on the. And then you start to 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 adapt your trading style, not not working with your um, with your um, initial strategy anymore. But all in all, the thing is that obviously here in terms of risk and money management and trading psychology, obviously an inadequate position size plays a very important role. I'm not saying that um, probably risking 1% is, uh, is, 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 is wrong. I'm not saying this. I'm only saying that probably you should start with a smaller trading account and you should be aware of that. So probably the uh, um, uh, risk and money management plan you're working out and the back test delivers that well, the strategy has a huge advantage you're trading. It has a huge advantage and at least you should well, probably risk something between 1.5 to 2 percent. So it's not sad that it's 1 percent. Even though everyone says don't risk more than 1 percent doesn't necessarily mean you should do this since uh, at the end of the day you also want to get paid once you're on the right side of a trade. It's not just about preserving what you have but it's also about um, um, find a way how to get an optimal growth of your equity curve. I mean, this is the second step. It's, it's, the first step is to preserve your, your money. That's definitely true. Um, no, about it, no doubt about it. But nevertheless, you, you have to always um, 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 uh, um, see that it's also, well, you, you have to get paid well for what you just go through here when trading the markets. And I can tell you from personal experience, well, this is, this is like hell. It's not. It's not fun. It's. It's. It's trading is is a is a well as already said at the first slide of this presentation here. Trading is the toughest game in the world, and you have to always remember that. And that's one of the reasons why, on the other hand, you just just don't want to preserve what you have. But on the other hand, you also want to get paid well if you're on the right side. So sometimes, and if the strategy um, justifies it well, you probably can risk more than 1%. That's all I say. And uh, this is the thing here. If you do not correspond with, with the position size and the risk you're taking here and the amount of money you're risking here is too high compared to your living standard, for example, well, you get a lot of trouble. This is something you have you have to handle when trading the markets and where you can perfectly see that risk and money management and trading psychology obviously interact very strongly with each other. Trading psychology and trading at advantage trading strategy is also a big point. I've already mentioned it between the lines. Um, so changing your strategy over and over again, especially after seeing a series of losing trades, possible reason the trader does not trust the strategy since he doesn't really know whether his approach is profitable in the long run or he does not know how losing streaks how long losing streaks on average to take, for example, or you start to somehow come to the uh, revenge mode where you say, well, I just got stopped out, I lost five grand, well, now I have to make this somehow back, um, this can't be, I hate the market, let's come on, let's, let's, let's fight. So this is, this is a perfect example of revenge trading then, um, or saying, well, this doesn't work out, but now I have a sign that the market is extended on the upside, that's why I'm trading the short side, or whatever reason. So um, that means jumping between um, trading strategies, several trading strategies, will cause you definitely trouble in the long run, and uh, this is something you have to... Um, overcome here. So from a mental perspective, it's completely okay um, if, you, if you don't feel great, if you had a losing rate of let's say three, four, five trades. But you have to always look at the pure stats and at the back test you've run here and you have to see, well, is this normal? If the strategy has such losing streaks of let's say on average five losing trades and the longest streak ever has been nine losing trades and you're three trades behind you you just lost three 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 well, I'm sorry three trades in a row well it's okay it's still it's 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 nothing unusual for the strategy you're trading and this is something which is giving you then mental stability if you then come I'm, I'm, I'm combining this with with um, with an adequate position size well you see that those three columns obviously play with each other. They interact with each other. Um, so here, risk and money management and trading advantage tra trading strategies is also something I already mentioned. So the question is how big 
is the advantage of the trading strategy and based on this information what's the optimal position size to keep drawdown small this is one thing preserving what you have and on the other side see an optimal growth of your equity curve so here obviously this component comes into play uh, when I say sometimes it can be that the strategy is probably um, uh, very advantage, advantageous and uh, meaning well you have to risk more per position you just have because you can risk more since the strategy allows it to do. But can you handle this from a mental perspective? And here you can see how these interaction uh, takes place and, and, and why it's so important to be an expert on every, um, on every column here. So just knowing what, for example, an expected value is doesn't bring you anywhere or a risk reward, how to calculate it or be an expert in a, in a certain um, area of technical uh, analysis, so Elliott waves or whatever, um, it doesn't bring you anywhere. Since if you can't handle the swings, um, um, and if you just do not know, handle the swings meaning from a mental perspective, you just can't handle the swings, and you just do not know whether what you're doing gives you an advantage, well, the thing is that obviously um, you will definitely have a lot of trouble. Since you're probably an expert on, as already said, technical analysis, risk and money management here and there, but if you just, let's say, do not know um, anything about you, your personality, your character, because you just don't want to face yourself, or if you do not um, um, work out strategies, how to cope with stress, for example, um, or how to adapt all your knowledge in risk and money management terms to uh, build and optimize your trading strategy, well, you just definitely won't make it in trading. So you have to be an expert on every of those uh, topics here if you, if you, if you want to come out ahead. So now let's have a look here. At the, uh, at the different columns of, of, of profitable trading. Um, so first of all, risk and money management, and which topic uh, solid risk and money management cover. So obviously understanding the trading is not just about predicting the direction of the market and saying if it goes up or down, um, but it's about market uh, making rational bets and, and intelligent bets, by the way. So yesterday, for example, there were people asking me, hey, um, why is the risk reward such a huge part in all your um, uh, presentations when, when covering the market. So why is risk reward always a topic um, since it's a fictional um, um, uh, um, component in your trading, right? So you just can't tell whether the market will fall, let's say, 50 points or something. So let's have a look here. This is the setup I just formulated for the S&P. I just do not know whether the market will um, fall down to 2,420 if, if it gets triggered. I just do not know this, but um, somehow I, I, I make a rational um, um, assumption here. I just look, well, this is the market structure. Um, this is the average true trading range of the last trading days. Let's, five, let's say five days, 10 days or something. And based on that, it's a, it's a good target to look at here. It's a region around the lows from last Friday and everything. Um, even though I can have as much experience as, as, uh, as no one else out there, that doesn't necessarily mean that the market will come down to this level here. So why is it nevertheless important? Well, for example, if you know, based on all your knowledge about your personal trading, you're having a trading journal, you're writing down all of your trades, you have a trading strategy where you exactly know over a very long period of time you have a hit rate of this and that, and you have a payoff ratio. This is the ratio of average loser, sorry, average winner to average loser of, let's say, three to one, um, meaning yeah, on average, on average, your winning trades are three times as high or as big as your losing trades. And you're facing such a setup here. Um, well, would you trade this or not? The answer is clearly no, since the risk reward is not giving you the right odds to trade it based on your personal trading and what you just uh, um, um, can expect to make with your, with your trading here. And this is something you have always take into account when, when when, when, when working with these columns here, and meaning that obviously risk and money management is way more uh, than, than just say, okay, it's about positive expected value, how to calculate this and all this, but it's, it's like, well, you, if, you, you just can't predict what the market will do next, and that's one of the reasons why you, you then have to find ways how to make uh, those rational, intelligent bets based on which you then start trades. Um, 
Second, it answers the question what profitable trading means. So trading an easy, duplicable, and advantageous strategy with a positive expected value. By the way, if you want to see a formula which is probably the most important formula in trading, this is it. Okay, it's the expected value. It's the hit rate multiplied with the average winning trade, uh, and then you subtract subtract the lost rate and multiply multiply it with the average losing trade. If the um, result is bigger zero you have a positive expected value making on average this and that per trade per risk euro well and then you're making money this is what profitability in trading means if you carefully watch this if you study this formula you will find out why it um, always uh, says well let your winners run and cut your losers short why is that well obviously average winning trade the bigger it gets uh, the bigger the first term here gets Let's uh, assume um, um, here. Assume that that, that the hit rate is is, uh, is stable and not moving. Even if it drops slightly, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that this term here is, is 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 dropping in value, but could also go up if the average winning trade goes up enough. And on the other hand, well, on the other hand, if the average losing trade drops here and you make your losers, the average losers smaller, obviously this term drops. So you sub subtract a smaller number here. You're getting this term up, you're getting this down. If you let your winners run and you cut your losers short, well, and this means that the positive, the expected value gets more and more positive. Very easy, you see. And uh, so this is this is exactly the thing here. Um, if you if you understand all this, then several quotes in, in in good trading books they they start to make sense, and you 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 get you start to get a feeling of of um, um yeah what what to make out of this. Um, the long run, in the long run, and why it will result in a high profitability in your trading when adapted the right way. So good risk and money, uh, risk money management um, covers the, the topic that it helps to understand that with a decreasing payoff ratio, for example, the chances of hitting the risk of ruin increases exponentially. What do I mean by this? Um, I'll, I'll show you this a little later in a, in a chart, but it also Risk, good at risk of money management shows that understa understanding the target of a trader to find a trading approach which has a risk of ruin is crucial. So risk of ruin means this is the risk of going broke with your trading. Uh, meaning that if your risk of ruin is zero, well, you have a nearly zero, nearly zero chance means one out of, I don't know, a trillion times or something. This is nearly zero. Um, that you're going broke with your trading. I mean, there can always be some kind of black swans, like the Ethereum crash yesterday, S&B 2015 January or something. This can happen, okay? But all in all, you can definitely make sure that also this does not break you. Um, it broke several people, like the S&B did, because they, people were highly leveraged against 120. They didn't look at the effect of leverage here. But what they did was um, they bet heavily that the S&B will... Uh, Will, will hold this level. So, if you're if you're having a 10,000 euro account and your broker is offering you um, a 400 to one leverage, and you just say, "Well, great, I can just build a position up to million million euros Swiss franc um, long," well, you definitely face some trouble if the market drops by, let's say, in this case, 30 percent. 30 percent out of one million is hmm, is a big number. So, uh, and you're obviously losing more than your initial deposit, and uh, if if you're if you're not protected here on a downside, well, you have to you have to pay. Um, and this is something you can avoid if you understand that, for example, effective leverage is a double or not effective leverage, but leverage in general is an is a double-edged sword, um, which you have to understand. So let's come to some some charts here. Oh, first of all, here understand that besides a payoff ratio of less than one, using a too aggressive leverage is one of the main reasons 90% of traders lose 90% of their money. Uh, in 90 days, uh, so this is this is what I just talked about regarding the leverage. So here, there's two charts: decreasing payoff ratio, which uh, re um, 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 uh, which increases the chance um, to risk to 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 reach your risk of ruin, so to to go broke with your trading. Meaning, the higher the payoff ratio, the higher uh, the ratio of average winners to average losers, the lesser the chance that you reach your risk of ruin. This is what this chart shows. Or on the other way, to put it differently here, let your winners run, cut your losers short. That's what it says. And the reason is because this increases the payoff ratio and decreases the risk of ruin. Okay, surely it has something to do, 
it has something to do with the hit rate. So meaning here, this is a Tefakut, is a German word for this, but it's hit rate. Uh, and here's the payoff ratio. And we're running a simulation here with um, a risk of three and, and um, with 2% risk per trade. So meaning if you have a payoff ratio of five to one, meaning you're making on average five euros for, per every euro you lose on average, and you have just a hit rate of 10%, well, your chance of reaching your pay, uh, your, your risk of urine is 100%. You go broke, you have no chance because the expected value of your approach is wrong, uh, or it's negative, it's not wrong, it's negative. So on the other hand, if you have a hit rate of 40%, um, and, and, and you have a payoff ratio, let's say, of 5 to 1, even if you have a payoff ratio of 3 to 1, well, you definitely make an enormous amount of money since you can easily calculate what this means. I mean, you can type it in here in the formula I just presented to you, um, expected value here. Uh, if you have a hit rate of 40% and you multiply this with an average winning trade of 3, um, and you subtract 60% or, or, or um, um, 0 0.6 from this, it means that on average per euro you risk, you're making 60 cent. Meaning, let's say you have a trading account of say 100,000 euros and um, you're risking 1%, that means you're risking uh, 1,000 euros per average, uh, on average per trade. Um, and if your expected value is 0 0.6, it says that um, on average per trade you make 600 euros. If this is stable and in, you just keep on, on on capitalizing on this strategy, well, you make 600 euros per trade. Meaning, if you have, let's say, 100 trades per year, and your average win per trade is uh, 600 euros, it means 100 multiplied with 600. This means 60 grand you're making. This is a this is this is this is a yield of 60 percent. So you're making 60,000 on a 100,000 euro account by just, I mean. Well, we haven't considered uh, uh, commissions here and everything, but this is this is a simple calculation which can easily show you um, how how even if you're just having a hit rate of in this case 40%, which can which which will bring you up to 60% per annum here if you're if you have a payoff ratio of three to one. If you get this, and if you if you if you uh, if you believe in this, and if you've seen that it works. Well, this gives you a tremendous boost in your confidence. This is from a mental perspective. It's 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 valuable. It's 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 invaluable. So you just can't imagine how important it is to 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 really understand what all this here in terms of risk and money management is. Because if you get the point, if you if you really understand this, if you if you go into depth here, well, this is what gives you the confidence to keep on trading, even if you're then facing a losing trade or two losing trades or three losing trades. Doesn't matter. I mean, four out of ten means that you have six losing trades in ten trades on average. So it's it's not sad that that you win lose you win lose. At least you will have two losses in a row minimum, if not three. And 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 this is something you you have to understand. If you if you get this point, well, you definitely um um see huge huge positive impact in your in your trading in general so let's have a look here trading psychology a very interesting concept and one of my definitely favorites in in trading in general because you can easily adapt this to to human nature in all aspects of your life which is great because there's no real trading psychology it's just psychology um, so what is a solid fundament, a mental fundal fundament build on so understanding that the target is to reach the mental state of so-called unconscious competence that a trading profitable approach out of one's zone um, is this what you're looking for so the question is how do I get there and well the answer is simple practice 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 so um, this was also a topic in the morning um, in the morning meeting German version of the morning meeting in this case so every time I firm in the trading setup it's always the same it's where's my entry, where's my stop, what's my potential target, what's the risk reward. I'm doing this over and over and over again. In the morning it was someone asking, hey, I mean, if someone is watching you here for let's say five years, can you really get something out of what you have to say? Um, I, I somehow, some really, I hope that he will get something out of this, um, even though uh, I, I, I somehow hope that he got out of what I told over the last five years, um, how to build and formulate a trading setup and based on that find a way to always run the same uh, um, uh, um, uh, run the same algorithm if you want and then build a level of so-called unconscious competence because that way you will get to a point where there's no question how you 
formulate a trading setup and that you will set a stop because you definitely know that this is a crucial part. Um, uh, that's a crucial part of, 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 of uh, formulating a trading setup and, and to formulate a risk reward ratio. So um, you have to understand here that emotions in trading are not necessarily something bad. So there are many people out there saying, hey, if you get emotional in your trading, um, you're done. That's not true. It's just not true because emotions are natural and emotions are human. And um, the target is to master those emotions which are resulting in being unprofitable and get rid of them while facilitate those who support your target of being more profitable. That's what you have to do. If you just feel great by, um, I don't know, like bringing you to the zone, let's say you work out every morning from 6 to 8 and you just see that this has a positive impact on your whole um, process process of being and, and performing then under under market conditions, well, just go for this, okay? From a mental perspective, that's worth it. And you probably have kind of rush and, and you just feel really positive and, and somehow this is emotions, emotions talking if you want um, and, and then showing, hey, it works and I feel good, I feel great. If this boosts your performance, go for it. Um, while if you say, let's say, I don't know, if you... If you if you feel weak or if you're um, uh, if you feel down or I don't know if 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 when it rains it doesn't feel good to trade or whatever um, well just stop it do more of what works and do less of what doesn't and at the end this will bring your trading to a very very positive uh, um, 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 and higher level here so. And understand that you need to know and understand yourself really well if you want to become profitable with your trading. The first up here is create a psychological profile. So um, this is something I do with my students, for example. Um, usually at, right at the beginning, right at the beginning, um, I, I, I tell them before we start with all the input here, I tell them, hey, guys, um, I want to get you to know who you are so that if you have a question, I can answer it since people are individual. And um, so creating a psychological profile, for example, is crucial. And it's, not, uh, it's, it's something you can work with your mentor through, but it's also something when uh, people say, hey, you know what? Um, this is something I have to remind myself of. So it's also a psychological profile you write for yourself. Um, on top of that, formulate a strategy which corresponds with your personality and helps tranquilize your inner voice which tries to sabotage you while getting into your zone and, st and, and staying there. So um, there's a technique I, 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 I usually use here which is called inducing, inducing rationality. I also presented this in the morning when I said, um, well, just imagine you have a 9 to 5 job and then you plan to trade the market opening in whatever index or in whatever currency. And um, so the, the thing is here um, that, um, how can I say that? It probably is not the right thing to do for you. It's not the right thing for you to trade the market opening since it probably does not correspond with your current lifestyle. If you have a 9 to 5 job and you have to work through this time and you can't concentrate on the markets, well, probably you have to find another strategy you're trading with. Sounds simple and in fact, it's very difficult for many traders to, to, to get to this point. So there are many people out there thinking, hey, today I, I have a day off, well, I, I sculpt the market opening, but this is not what trading is about. So if you have a clear defined trading approach, you know that the expected value of this strategy you just tested is positive. You have to run through this every single day without second doubts. You just have to run through this, okay? And you just can't say, okay, I'm trading it on Monday, but Tuesday I have to work. That, that, that just doesn't work. And this is something um, which is, which is uh, very important. Many people ignore this. Um, I don't know why, but, but from a mental perspective, this is something which will help you to uh, bring your trading to the next level. And here, here is uh, a very great chart um, which is, by the way, it's a German chart, so that's a little unfortunate, um, but it's, uh, I'll, I'll show this to you in English. One second, please. Um, so you can go to Wikipedia for this one, by the way. So this one will we'll show you uh, Google, and then we go to Wikipedia, Wikipedia jerks dots and law. <clears throat> so, um, So 
So here, you see the performance, weak strong, you have it from low to high, it's the arousal, and here's the increasing attention and interest. This is the optimal performance level, region, the zone, if you want, and here, impaired performance because of strong anxiety, for example, emotions coming up, um, getting, um, well, want to tr revenge trade or whatever reason. So as you can see here, you have to warm up. You have to come to a certain level to reach your zone. This is what I meant by working out in the morning, for example. While here you have to avoid that you drop on the right side um, since this is the region where then um, uh, negative impacts on your trading and negative expected value comes into play. So meaning, for example, you, you, you just uh, forget what you, what you already learned or um, you, well, like, how can I say this? Um, you just don't follow your plan anymore. And uh, so this is something you have definitely, um, uh, yeah, you, you have definitely to, 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 to understand. This, this jerks Dodson law, this model, perfectly illustrates why emotions in trading are important. And you have to get rid of those who result here in a drop on the right, uh, on the right side. Well, you have to find... Um, um, all those techniques and things you like to bring you to, to a certain level to your zone to perform well and and uh, perform perfectly. So and the third one. So we have to hurry up a little. I'm I'm really sorry for that since uh, um, we only have five minutes left. But I want to come to the third column here: advantage trading trading strategy. So what does it mean to have such a trading strategy with an advantage? Um, this means that um, you have a strategy which has a positive expected value and um, this positive expected value is something you can see also after quite a long period of time, a longer time frame. So you have tested the strategy under different market conditions like um, a trending strategy, a trend following system also in a, in a choppy market environment. And if you've seen there that the market does not bust you, it does not bust the strategy. Well, this is really great, and since it is like you have to, um, uh, yeah, you, you just have to go for it and identify the spots when you have an advantage. When you then start to increase for your position size, for example, well, reducing the position size once you do not face an advantage anymore. So, like lay, laying a filter in it or something. So, saying I'm just going long once uh, you have a retail sentiment as filter, and saying I, I just go long. Once, um, once the retail sentiment is, is, is net short, or the other way around, for example. Um, again, the strategy has to fit the personality, respectively, um, the character of, of you, the character of the trader. Um, since, uh, second, yeah, it has to, to, to fit the personality of the trader. Um, or the life circumstances, that means someone working full-time 50 hours, like, like, like I already said, will very unlikely be able to trade an approach which generates 50 trades a day, hardcore scalping like this. Or, well, not sad that, that this is, a, it can be, for example, that you automate this, but nevertheless have to have a look at this, for example. Okay, you have to, 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 to see whether the, the strategy still performs well. Um, you have to understand that having a profitable trading strategy also means that a trader is confident and firmly believes in the strategy based on a solid backtest which uh, you run and where you could see that the strategy worked, worked in the long run. So this is exact, this is, this is crucial, this is essential since perfection in trading and reaching the state of unconscious competence can just be achieved if the trader keeps on trading it over and over and over again and does not second guess it. Um, so this is this is the third column here in this case. So and Bruce Lee was was great on this topic since he once said, "I don't fear the man who practices one thousand kicks one time each." The, all those traders presenting to you several strategies and this like that, and and you probably um, seen some courses on the internet where someone said, "Well, I I educate you. You have fifty strategies for me." Well, great. What what about fifty strategies? Um, I, I mean, I don't need fifty strategies. I need one, and I have to master this. And I have to see that whether it works or not. And this is what he means with, I fear the man who practices one kick 1,000 times. And this is, I, I think it, it, it perfectly, perfectly sums it up. Um, and um, so here, an overview. If you're looking for profitability in your trading, uh, or you're looking for an educational course, a seminar, which is bringing you 
um, exactly there, profitable to become profitable in your trading, um, then you have to look for uh, um, 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 an approach which is built on these three columns. So risk and money management. What does profitability in trading, for example, mean? What is the payoff ratio, average winner um, uh, um, divided by the average loser? The risk of reading, a technique called scale out if you want, scaling out of positions uh, which are not running your direction, how to permanent a winning rate and all this. It has to also cover trading psychology aspects, meaning the four steps of learning, for example. So, um, in conscious incompetence. Uh, or unconscious, I'm sorry, unconscious incompetence, uh, conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and in unconscious competence. So those four steps of learning, good and bad emotions, how to profit from them, how to reach the zone I just presented. So this is the uh, the, the, the top of the Jerks Dotson um, uh, model here. Um, creating one's personal trading psychological profile, for example, to, to uh, get to know yourself better, know why you're doing this or that. Um, in your trading, um, and so on, and then building an advantageous trading strategy. So formulating a trading idea, clear plan, what do I want to do, what do I aim on, do I want to trade progressions, regressions, do I want to trade um, um, trends, like, you see, uh, so all these things, you have to formulate it, you have to clearly write it down, what you want to do, why it should work, why you think it works, and then you, you build a professional and also a personal risk and money management approach based on your personal lifestyle, on your personal situation. Um, you prepare for, for mental um, uh, um, tripping hazards and all this and you, you get to know on how long are usually losing streaks, how long do they take, on average, how is the absolute um, um, losing streak taking. Winning trades the same, so getting emotional and thinking you're the greatest trader on earth since you saw, I don't know, three winners in a row, it's probably not such a great idea. Um, and all these things, and, and all those are, are these three columns. If you build your strategy, if you build your trading on those three columns, I, I'm highly convinced that you will see uh, a huge positive impact in your trading. And um, so with this, I want to end this webinar. I, um, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate uh, you being here and I, I wish you a nice evening. Um, happy trading all the time. Watch your stops and if you have any questions, just shoot them over. You have the email address here in, uh, at the bottom. Um, contact me via Twitter. It's at Jens Klad, um, FX if you want. And um, yeah, I, I definitely look forward to it. Um, have a nice evening. So talk to you again next week with the next special webinar and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Um,